taking this extremely seriously, and here's why. Uh, there is always the possibility of aftershocks, and I'll get to that in a moment, but uh, we have not felt the magnitude of an earthquake of this level since about 2011. Actually, I was in Washington, D.C. at the time, and my apartment when I was in Congress was severely damaged. Uh, we felt those effects all the way up to this Buffalo, New York. So these are wide-scale possibilities. Um, this is one of the largest earthquakes on the East Coast to occur in the last century. So I immediately directed my emergency management team the second we received word of this to start doing damage assessments, uh, any life in danger, and finding out whether there's any bridges or tunnels that are compromised. And so uh, that was the first reaction. You'll be hearing from uh, the team that has been working on that. I also immediately spoke to Governor Phil Murphy to offer any assistance and to find out uh, what is happening in his state which, again, was the epicenter. Our teams have been in constant communication with the mayor of New York. We also spoke to the MTA to ensure the integrity, the structural integrity of the subway system, the Port Authority, and I want to announce that right now JFK and Newark airports are on full ground stops to assess uh, any potential for after effects. And we've been in contact with the utility companies uh, to make sure that the gas and electric services continue. I will report that Amtrak and MTA are on full schedule, no disruption there at this time. Uh, been in communication with the White House. They reached out to us. The uh, Deputy of Homeland, Homeland Security Advisor, who's actually with President Biden right now surveying the damage in Baltimore, called us, and I believe they felt the effects even in Baltimore. So uh, it's been a, a very unsettling day, to see the, say the least. But the White House offered any assistance. Uh, Senator Schumer reached out, offered any assistance. So uh, right now, it's most important that we have our structural teams out there, our engineering teams, surveying our bridges, our roads, any area there could be a fault line that is not easily detectable to make sure that uh, passengers on our rails as well as our commuters are safe. Assessing all state roads, uh, Commissioner Dominguez is taking lead on that, making sure our state roads are safe. Um, major transmission lines and dams, because you don't always see the effects of a small crack that actually could uh, develop into a real major problem. And we're also encouraging all the municipalities throughout the state of New York to assess for any structural integrity concerns. At this point, uh, about, you know, heading into an hour and a half after the effects, we've not identified any life-threatening situations but we are certainly asking our local law enforcement and emergency services teams to be on guard for that as well. But again, we are going to be reviewing all potentially vulnerable infrastructure state sites throughout the state of New York that is critically important in the aftermath of, a, of an event like this. Now, again, I have a few safety tips because New Yorkers are not accustomed to having earthquakes in, uh, in our state, and everyone should continue to take this seriously. If there is an aftershock, People are encouraged to drop and to cover and to hold on. Drop to the floor, cover your neck, and hold on to something that is sturdy. Take caution near any damaged buildings. Again, we don't have reports of damaged buildings at this time. It is very early in the assessment process. But you know, if there is an after effect, please stay away from buildings, especially our high rises. If you hear shifting or any noises, unusual noises, leave your home. Go outside, you are safer there than in a building that could be crumbling around you. Inspect your home for damage. Check walls, floors, doors, windows, staircases. And uh, if you see any damage at all, you may need to relocate uh, while the event is going on. Again, check your own gas lines and water lines to make sure that your family is safe. So stay connected and informed. I will say this, uh, especially with all the national news about what happened in Taiwan with that deadly earthquake, uh, just this past week, I think there's a high level of anxiety around earthquakes. The magnitude, which Catherine Garcia and uh, Commissioner Bray will explain, uh, th that was a 7.4 magnitude in Taiwan. Again, we are 4.8, and they'll explain the difference. But that's why we're going to continue to take this very seriously and make sure that we continue to update all New Yorkers. So uh, Catherine Garcia, our head of state operations, you'll hear from first, and then Commissioner Jackie Bray, head of Homeland Security. Thank you, Governor. I want to reiterate that we have no reports of damage at this time, uh, and that immediately all of the infrastructure agencies activated their policies and procedures to deal with this, because while highly unusual in the state of New York, we do actually have fault lines. Uh, this was significantly bigger than ones that are typically felt in the state of New York or occur and actually are not felt. 
That is because earthquakes happen on a logarithmic scale, which means that a 3.0 is 10 times worse than a 2.0. So a 4.0 uh, is 10 times easier than a 5.0. So every one of those uh, makes a significant difference in what you will experience and what the damage could be. Um, in addition, we are also tracking whether or not there's any increase in hospitalizations, as well as whether or not there's any increase in uh, vehicle accidents that has not been reported at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Bray. Um, not much to add about uh, the governor and Director Garcia covered it. I would say we did see an overloading loading of cell circuits uh, in the New York City area immediately after the event. We've been in touch with AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Uh, their networks are clear now and, and back up and working, and we have opened um, the uh, state's emergency operations center. We're at, we're at a level three uh, to monitor uh, impacts and reports that come in. We've seen one gas leak in Rockland County, uh, but other than that, there don't seem yet to be uh, major uh, infrastructure impacts, but we are in touch with the counties. We'll stay in touch with the counties um, all day. Great, thank, thank you. you. All right, let's do some on-topic questions. Governor, has there been any contact with uh, the Indian Point facility in Westchester and any concerns there? Uh, that's part of our analysis of all uh, critically important infrastructure. So yes, the communication has gone out, correct? Yeah, we, we, we are in, we're, we're in constant touch with both that facility and our other facilities. We're, there's no damage reported at Indian Point. We wouldn't expect damage um, at this time, and we're in touch with Westchester, and we'll stay in touch with Westchester. Governor, can you just say what you were doing at the time that it hit, and what you felt, and what was going on? Uh, no surprise to anybody here in the Capitol. I was meeting with my senior team, talking about their late night working on the budget, and we were talking about how we're going to move the budget forward today. So literally sat in the room next door, uh, people felt different degrees of movement in the room, uh, surprising, and uh, all of a sudden everybody's cell phones start lighting up and describing what it was. So uh, we, were, we were literally right here working on the budget. And uh, getting a, a budget done that includes a uh, once-in-a-lifetime housing package may be the only excisement event we expected this week. So this was rather unanticipated. You cannot plan for this. There's no early warnings. There's no weather uh, service that can tell you an earthquake is imminent, and that's why uh, everybody was caught off guard. But fortunately, here in the state of New York, we are masters of disasters. We know how to handle this uh, from, you know, unexpected snowstorm just a couple days ago. Uh, everybody's anticipating massive crowds for another uh, celestial event on Monday with the total eclipse uh, pathway going through large parts of our state. So, so my point is, we're always ready. Uh, we have planning in place for all of our teams activate instantaneously. And I feel very you know, comfortable about that. But again, these are emerging situations. It could be over, but also there could be another effect. And we have to be prepared for that and, and warn New Yorkers to be particularly vigilant in the, the days uh, following an original earthquake. Governor, I'm, I assume your team has, has analyzed the, the aftershock forecast. What, what do they show? What, what should we anticipate? Uh, Commissioner Bray, the former head of uh, one of the heads of the National Weather Service. Is this something you can predict? Uh, no, it's yeah, little, yeah. We don't, we don't, um, we don't predict, or we don't predict the, the aftershocks aren't predictable. And so um, we'll stay, we, you know, obviously we'll monitor USGS's um, information, uh, but we're not looking at, these aren't forecastable events. Governor, one more, one more on, on the ground stop uh, at JFK and the airports. Is there a timeline for? How that gets we just spoke to them. Do they have a timeline on that? Okay, on the ground. We, we don't have a timeline yet. What they're doing is uh, really confirming that the air traffic control towers are safe to operate in. Um, so as soon as we know, we'll make sure that that's public information. Which uh, airports were those again? I'm sorry. JFK and Newark. Not LaGuardia? Not LaGuardia. Why not LaGuardia? Why not LaGuardia? Because they've redone their, they, they have a more recent, y'all let Catherine explain. Uh, we're getting more information, but we suspect it is because they were renovated more recently. Uh, and meet higher standards. Thanks, everybody. All right, thank you very much, thank everybody. You. Appreciate it. Any meeting with the legislative leaders today on the budget? Uh, 